Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I want to welcome our Chesapeake Bay program partners, our um, members of the press, and interested citizens in this release of this year's Health and Restoration Assessment, or Bay Barometer, for the Chesapeake Bay and Watershed. Uh, in addition to the folks here at the museum in Washington, D.C., um, our folks who are participating in our live webcast. Today, we are releasing our annual Health and Restoration Assessment on the Chesapeake Bay and Watershed. It's a unique feature. Um, this watershed and this bay, its, its size, its ecological and cultural and economic significance, and its sheer beauty are, are truly a marvel. Um, we are also very fortunate to have very extensive monitoring data and analysis that really give us a, a clear sense as to the health of the bay. Um, today, we have handed out for those of you in the audience an executive summary for the Health and Restoration Assessment, or the Bay Barometer. Uh, for those of you online, you may access the entire report and begin um, taking a look at that and seeing the extensiveness of the data behind it. I'd like to thank a couple of people uh, in the audience who have joined us today. Uh, very briefly, Tommy Wells, D.C. Council member, who is also uh, the chair of our Local Government Advisory Committee. Thank you, Tommy, for being here. Uh, Bill Dennison, the Vice President of the University of Maryland Center for Environmental Sciences. Thank you, Bill. Um, Roy Hoagland, the Vice President of the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. Ann Swanson, the Executive Director of the Chesapeake Bay Commission. Uh, Bruce Michael from Maryland, Department of Natural Resources, one of our important state partners. Um, what I'd like to do is give you some brief uh, punchlines of what this, uh, this year's report says and frankly give you a brief outline of the, the longer report and introduce some of the members and partners who are here to help talk about that. Um, for those of you who are able to look online and to take a peek at the report itself, um, you'll see that chapter, begin, chapter one begins with a, a description of the various factors that impact bay and watershed health. And Scott, I'm sorry, Rich Batuk, I'm, Rich Batuk will be here, sorry. Scott Phillips is here with the USGS to talk about those factors. Uh, chapter two provides extensive data and measures on the quality of um, the ecosystem, as well as, um, as um, measures of ecosystem health. And we're fortunate to have Rich Batuk here, as well as Peyton Robertson of NOAA, who will, who will get into some of the detail for us. Um, chapter three um, begins to lay out some of the, the different restoration activities that are being done by the wide array of partners across the watershed. I'm very pleased that David Paler, Director of the Virginia Department of Environmental Quality, and George Hawkins, Director of the District of Columbia Department of the Environment, are both here to talk about examples of those different restoration activities. In terms of what this report means, uh, there has been important progress across the watershed by a wide array of partners at the federal, state, and local level. But quite frankly, despite that important progress, the bay continues to be in a severely degraded condition. It continues to have poor water quality, degraded habitats, and low populations of key species of fish and shellfish. This year, one of the things we've done differently is try to take the variety of measures that we have to demonstrate bay health and collapse them into a simple, um, easy to understand measure when it comes to bay health, from an ecosystem standpoint, we have 13 measures. We've rolled them up into a single index, which on a scale of 100, using 100 as a restored bay, the bay health is at about a scale of 38. We've taken the 21 restoration measures, those activities that the full array of partners are doing, again, 100 reflecting full implementation of those measures, and together, we're at about 61. The takeaway from both of those numbers is we have a long way to go in terms of progress. Before I ask um, our partners to uh, describe a little bit more of the detail of the report, 
I'd like to take an opportunity to introduce uh, Chuck Fox, who is a senior advisor to the administrator who will provide us a brief perspective from the Environmental Protection Agency and the administration. Chuck, it's great to have you here. 